Epic Beyond the Bulletin. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. We got a special show. We are starting with video, and then we're going to roll the we've, audio smoothly we've been out on, to our audience. Yeah, we've been on a Beyond the Bulletin hiatus uh, pre-pandemic. So it's funny because I thought the Lena Angelus was praying the Angelus and then doing Beyond the Bulletin. Yeah. That's how whenever I had my solo show, I described it. And everyone's like, nah, dog, nah. That ain't what it is. I yeah. Know. Whoops, so, please. so Whoopsies. we have, yeah, we've we've kind of ended the Lena Angelus now that we're, um, you know, kind of past the initial shock of coronavirus, <laughs> and we want to get back to our Beyond the Bulletin podcast. But we've learned a lot in the last uh, few weeks some and people. months. Uh, yeah. yeah, some people have. <laughs> but I, I think for us, you know, we actually have been talking about this, you know, since we started the podcast, which is, wouldn't it be awesome if the the podcast, the podcast. Uh, I forgot we called it that. Yeah. It has been so long. The podcast. Because we're St. Anthony of Padua. Padua. Uh, so, didn't know that. yeah. So we've been talking about, let, like, let's do this on location places yeah. and, you know, film it uh, a live version as well as a recorded version. And we got a little taste of that because we did something for the Horizon campaign back in January. And then everything. Total blew, train wreck. Yeah. Then a Total pandemic ha happened. A global pandemic. And here we are. So we're back. Yeah. We're, this is the new and improved Beyond the Bull. It's, it's in. in. Very good. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so what do we, who, we have a special back. guest today. Not you. No. Not me. We have a special guest. I'm excited. I'm excited. I like it when we do have special guests because it's more entertaining. And uh, I'm tired of listening to you. Yeah, I know. I'm tired of listening <laughs> to me, too. If there's one thing me and my wife agree on. It's. Oh, what? Oh, no, I'm just go kidding. on. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have a special guest. All right, Jay, kick it on over. We got Christy Marlowe. Jay, I don't know why I'm giving you direction. Hey, guys. Christy Marlowe, what is your official title? title? Czar of Elementary? <laughs> I think we should call uh, you Czar. I know. It's, it's the Czarina. Commander in Chief of the Household. Yeah, why would I think it would be anything other than a military yeah, I was term? Say, she was in the U.S. In military. I wouldn't refer to her as a Czar. Yeah, how long were Not you in the Air style. Force? I was in the Air Force for eight years. Eight? After school. Mm -hmm. Eight years. Eight years. And that's how you met your husband, correct? I did. Yes. Awesome. He was in the military as well. And he used to fly the unfriendly skies. So he flew for the military <laughs> and now he flies for the friendly skies. Nice. Is that what they literally call it? The yep. unfriendly skies? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Someone copyright that right now. We yeah. need to trademark that. Air Armour fighter pilot. What, uh, what kind of planes <laughs> did he fly? I'm so excited now that I'm talking about air, airplanes. What did he fly when he was? He was an instructor pilot on T-38s, which are uh, fighter pilot fighter pilot type training aircraft and then he flew mc-130p which means uh special ops c-130s and they'd fly night um level low level drop parachuters out refuel helicopters all that secret stuff that i'd have to kill you for you to know because i don't even know yeah and i'll tell you what <laughs> if anyone in our office can kill me without uh skipping a beat it'd be christine Marlowe. wow yeah. that's aggressive yeah, yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> i used to say like what, what was the line i would say like now, I know that she can kill me probably five different ways with her pinky. I think I think that's true. So he used to fly C-130s? Her Hercules? Yes. Is that the Hercules? No. Well, he well, flew the special ops version. Not of the, the cargo C version. Right. Oh, okay, yes. that's cool. That's cool. So this is why I'm really excited. Uh, because we're in the danger zone. Da 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 da. Always. So some do. things haven't gone away with pandemic, including your lame dad. My jokes. terrible sense of humor. Yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. no. What I'm excited about having Christine on today uh, is that you know Christine is uh, is a staff member at St. Anthony of Padua, and she is such a great example of how diverse our staff is in terms of what they bring to the table and how they serve the parishioners and the experience that they have. Um, it's it, not all Franciscan University theology. No, words. no, no, no. And, and, and thank, <laughs> it's almost all, but not entirely. And thank God for that. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd be all financially ruined. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I think that, uh, you know, where back. I've seen, Christine, you you shine a lot in the last few years since I've been back at St. Anthony's uh, has been in the, the crisis that we've we've gone through in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. 
uh, obviously with Harvey, um, you were pivotal and kind of, I remember the first day we were outside, uh, the day after everyone kind of came out of their houses and everyone started clearing out their closets and bringing stuff. Yeah. And you were thinking of, you were thinking of things that I would have never thought of, which was because we had all these people driving stuff. You're like, we need to know who's actually on our campus. I'm going to start taking down license plates numbers. So, and it was like, oh my gosh, I would have never thought of that, but it was so good and so efficient for that, that moment. And we've seen some of that with this current pandemic you've jumped in. So why don't you share with us a little bit about what you've been doing? Because your normal kind of tasks at the church are focused on SAC prep and faith formation, but what have you been helping out with recently? Right. So as we all know, right now, the faith formation has kind of taken a little pause. Parents are doing that. They're helping themselves. Sacraments are a little bit of a pause. We're hoping to be able to bring that back up pretty soon. But once things started um, turning the other way, my other passion is definitely for outreach. So I went over to the St. Teresa Center, and we have a very wonderful man, Franklin Marsan, who runs the food pantry. And I said, hey, Franklin, do you need some help? And he said, yes, because as everybody is ramping down, the food pantry is ramping back up. Right. And so you've probably seen Father Tom asking for um, the jelly. canned goods. Jelly in plastic jelly containers. Jelly in plastic yeah. containers. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. If you've ever dropped a jar of jelly on the hard floor in the pantry, yeah. it explodes like napalm. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So it's Grape a lot of fun. napalm. I like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I but love we, the smell of grape and napalm yeah. in the morning. So what, what has kind of been different out at the St. Teresa Center um, this go around? Because Harvey was insane because it was like half the St. Teresa Center became let's give out, you know, mops and buckets and yeah. uh, shop vacs tools. Right. And yeah. then the other part was the the food. But this mm-hmm. time, it, it, it's really just been about the food. So why don't right. you share with us a little bit of just different things you've seen this go around? Yeah. Right. So what's happening now, at least with Harvey, when we've had a hurricane, we know there's an ending. You know, you're probably going to get your house fixed. You're going to have a little bit of a need. We had a need for mucking houses, finding cleaning products, ways that we can help fix. And then it's over. And, you know, there are still people who are recovering. But it, for the most part in our area, people recovered within a finite amount of time. And so we were a transition back to normal operations. But right yeah. now, we have, we have a, a disaster that you can't put your finger on. Right. Yeah. It's intangible. You and, can't and you shouldn't, see it. And you actually. You're supposed to keep your fingers to yourself. Exactly. <laughs> but you can't see it. You yeah. can't feel it. We, we're not even sure how to deal with it because our country hasn't dealt with something in this, yeah. this kind of magnitude for right. a long, long, long time, at least not since I've been alive. Yeah. So we don't know how to deal with it. And um, as we see, it's not only bringing disease and sickness and putting people in the hospitals. It's also causing economic devastation. Yeah, the economic devastation. is So many people yeah. who've um, lost their jobs, have um, uncertainty in their work, pay cuts, yeah. parents having to homeschool their own children it's while working, while doing stuff. So we have seen a great increase in the need for people who need groceries, who need food, who need to supplement because maybe they can hardly afford to pay their rent, but we can help them by giving them jelly or peanut butter. Um, So we have seen a double of the families come through. If you've been in our parking lot on a Saturday morning when we serve, the cars snake around the parking lot in a big line. Thank God for all that parking we have. Exactly. Because it's actually (laughs) provided a great drive through type situation from mm-hmm. what I've seen. I, I've actually had a few parishioners that reached out to me and they were like, what's going on at church today on Saturday mornings? And I'm like, that's the food pantry. That that's is the reality. Is right. what that is. That's a need. I, I actually had yeah. kind of a cool thing that happened a few weeks ago as restaurants were kind of starting to open back up. Um, you know, I wanted to frequent my favorite restaurants because I want to make sure that they're around. We're talking Burger King. We're talking Wendy's. Absolutely We're talking not. McDonald's. Absolutely not. So my favorite, <laughs> my favorite restaurant in the Woodlands uh, is Sakikawa Sushi. Yeah, you love that place. I love, I love sushi, and I love Sakikawa because I think they make good sushi. So much so that before the pandemic, they know me. Okay, they like I walk in and they they're like Steven's here. They know my order and it's a standing order and it's fantastic. Actually, I went to you. I went to you. I went with you there yeah. and they just walked up to you and were like, "Are you gonna get the number twenty yeah. four or Actually, whatever it was?" I don't know that I, it's not the number twenty four, but. Uh, I don't know that it's okay. lunch seat. I don't know that I should actually be admitting this because it's actually a little bit of my sacred space. It's where I hide out. I don't want <laughs> so people to go So you can find Steven at Saki Kwa. Kawa. <laughs> so anyways, there is uh, there is a very sweet uh, waitress there. And I'm not going to obviously share you know a name or anything. But obviously, people that are in the service industry, this has hit really hard. And 
Um, so I was going and ordering takeout and she was kind of sharing with me some of the hardship that she, her and her daughter and her niece who uh, she adopted, they lost everything during Harvey. They yeah. lived in an apartment that was flooded out. And now this has happened uh, two yeah. years later. And so I just was kind of sitting there listening and I, I felt helpless, but then I was like, you know what? And I, I got, I wrote down the pantry hours. I wrote down St. Vincent de Paul's number at our parish and I gave it to her and I just said, you know where St. Anthony's is. It's right down the road. Don't be afraid to reach out. And then I went back in maybe the next week uh, and she was there again. Maybe two days later. Yeah. Then. And she had a tear in her eye. She said, I went to St. Anthony's and not only did, you know, um, I get food to take care of my girls, but St. Vincent de Paul helped me pay my bills, which just, it was an amazing thing. Like I didn't, you know, that, that was the parishioners. I was just kind of happened to be there and was able to, to pass off that phone number. And so I want to encourage people. If you know people that are going through hardship and you're a member of our, our parish family, send them our way, uh, send them the, the information, give them the address, all that kind yeah. of stuff. What's amazing is all of the donations are from our parishioners. So all the monetary donations, the food donations, they're from people in our parish associated with our parish. So that's the generosity of our people. We are serving those in our community, those who are around us. And it's just an incredible thing because we don't know when it's going to end. We don't see an ending to it right now. Right. So there's still going to be a need. There's still, you know, if, if I have food on the table, I feel like I need to share some of it because there are plenty of people that don't have food on the table or who don't have great home lives or who don't have uh, what I am blessed to have. So for us as a parish to reach out to those people, whether it's a tangible way like a can of food or paying some cash or an intangible way by, you know, saying hi to somebody at the grocery store that just might need a friendly face, there are ways that we can show who we are as Christians, as followers of Jesus to people in need. And let's pivot the conversation about, you know, what we have. You know, you on top of working for the church and volunteering in the food pantry, you're also uh, a mom. Yes. And you have an interesting gamut where you have one daughter who's supposed to be graduating from college at A&M. And you have another daughter who's supposed to be graduating high school. What is that like judging, juggling <laughs> online? Is it online? What are they doing for them? Well, um, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I, exactly. <laughs> Our whole exactly. Life is dot, dot, dot. Everybody's got yeah. something that's affecting them this pandemic. So it affects people in different ways. So I really can't say who's worse, who's not. Yeah. You know, I know in my family, which of my family members it impacts the most. Um, somebody with young children, you, Gomer, you, you guys have a different way that it's impacting you. Right. Somebody who has a family member who's very sick or who's immune compromised and maybe yeah. doesn't feel like that they can go out and experience the world like the rest of us may feel like we can do, it, it, it impacts people in different ways. So I can tell you a little bit about the impact in my family, yeah. um, but it's not to minimize what, what other people have going on. But yes, I have a senior at A&M and she did graduate okay. virtually Okay, last it week. did happen. Yay. Yes. Yeah, I, yes. okay, so I saw... So, I saw we got um, the announcement thing, so yes. yeah. I, and I saw on social media all these people that had uh, kids graduating from A&M, but all the picture was was the, the the graduate's name on Kyle Field on the Jumbotron. What yes. was it? Was that what? That was streamed for about five and a half hours because there were over 10,000 graduates. <laughs> so they streamed all 10,000 names. Half of our parish population. Yes, over, over that time. <laughs> okay. And so we got the quick, we were watching because they kind of gave us a window. We had an hour oh. window. We'd seen it. So we're watching, we're watching, take the screenshot, hurry up, you know, so you could have the one picture of the official graduation. Wow. So she did that. They had a little stream thing. She did the ring flip, all that in our home, you know, in her shorts and t-shirt, Aggie clothes. So that, that's hard for an Aggie because Aggies are all yeah. about yeah. tradition. Right. That's gig them. Yeah. Gig them. That Gigs. is them all. <laughs> Gig a job, you know. <laughs> so, so, I mean, we we had to really look at it. Uh, and then my daughter, who's graduating from high school here at the Woodlands High School, a who, lot who, of you. Who many would recognize why? Lizzie. My daughter, Lizzie, is a cantor <laughs> at St. Yeah, Anthony. Incredible. So she, she enjoys doing that. She's been doing that since she was probably second grade. She's yeah. been she's been cantor. Also for known as time. Annie Get Your Gun. Annie from Annie, Annie Get Oakley. Your Gun. My daughters mm -hmm. yeah. sing it every day. Right. It's been awesome. Right. So she's graduating from high school. And, you know, if you remember your high school graduation, you probably remember prom. You probably remember the banquets, the sports banquets, right. the whatever it was that you were supposed to do at the end of the year that culminated your entire 
13 years of school, because of course you count kindergarten. Yeah. And that she and her friends watched all that crash and burn around them. Yeah. yeah. So that for our family has been a real yeah. okay. We need to really think. My, my husband's amazing. He's an amazing man. And he had we have these family meetings. We say family meeting, and the kids first say, is it good or bad? You know, they never know. Okay, are we having a talking to? Or are we having a yeah. talking Am to? Am I going to yell that? I want to have a like family meeting. That sounds great. So we yeah. have family meetings. And he, in his wisdom, said, in our situation, we have to realize we are being inconvenienced right now. Yeah. We are blessed. We are not sick. We have not. Thank goodness we have not lost yeah. our job. We are secure in our family. You know, everybody's everybody's okay. Um, our mental health problems are just our own, just being stir crazy from being you right. know in the house and stuff. Yeah. But we had to really do a mental check. And so we decided, okay, are we going to allow ourselves to crash and burn at the end of this year? Or are we going to do something to make a difference? So we challenged our kids to do something that's going to make a difference for somebody else nice. in that's your own awesome. way, whatever and, it was. And they have. And I've seen that in your kids. So kudos mm -hmm. to you guys for having that conversation. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Lizzie with her new her new baking ministry that she's been doing. Yes. Tell, cool. tell everyone ab about that because oh, okay. <laughs> they are delicious. And maybe this will get her a few Steven orders. Stephen literally stole oh. a cookie from my desk. I sure did. You shouldn't have left them out on, your, on, not on your desk. I should yeah. not have. If you sit on my front passenger seat, you'll find the rest of the crumbs. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lizzie is famous for her cookies. Nice. And she's also famous for writing letters of encouragement. When she's on the set of her plays, she's always, she's she'll, she'll be up till two in the morning like, what are you doing, Lizzie? Mom, I got to write all these notes. So she'll write notes and bake cookies all night long for these members of her cast just to give them a boost of encouragement. That's her charism that, that, so that she awesome. likes to do. That is so, so awesome. she said, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little cookie business where I bake cookies and I deliver them with a homemade card so you can order them and with people can write, you know, card. homemade card because she's awesome. a crafty mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to donate part of my proceeds to the St. Anthony's Bread Food Pantry because it means so much to me because that's how I can help. So it gave her a purpose. It gave her a way to get up yeah. to and those bake, co those you know? cookies rival the double tree hotel cookies let me just tell you they are amazing and the, what was cool is actually so i heard she was doing this because it went around on the the slack channel i think at work or something mm -hmm, like that yeah. and i was like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna order some for another staff member well the same day i decided to do that another staff member had already ordered some for me it was kind of this cool thing of like it's just a mm -hmm. neat way right now uh to to affirm people because i think that everyone needs a little bit of grace right now right and uh, the fact that she's using her talents to do that, mm -hmm. in addition to her many other talents, is is really incredible. So right. kudos to you, Mom. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and to my husband. No, but, I, you know, I challenge everybody. Find something you're passionate about. Don't let this time of quarantine, of having to be alone, of having uh, schedule disruptions, don't let it go by and say, what did I do during yeah, that right. time? Come out and better. Everybody, come out better. Come out better. Everybody's got their challenges. I, I am going to be the first one to admit that. We have our challenges where it sucks. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this was not what we expected of our right. May, of our April. No, yeah. uh, this is supposed to be the most first fun time of year. Every bit of my seniors, yeah. my other daughter who didn't get to graduate from the prep school, It just all kinds of stuff. But what can you do? What what can you do to listen to God tell you how he wants you to be during this yeah, time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so um, Maggie did not get to graduate from the prep school. However, her good news this week is. Well, she didn't graduate in person. So they, again, had the virtual. Right. <laughs> Yay. You have your appointment. So she'll be going to the Air Force Academy. Congratulations. And, and that's end of in, June. Uh, in, end of June. In Colorado? In Colorado Springs. In Colorado yes. Springs. Uh -huh. How cool is that? Yes. That's, that's so awesome. Cool. So I'm so angry, though, because she is the world's greatest babysitter. Mm. And <laughs> You're going to say that in front of my other daughters? Oh, dang. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yes. I love Maggie. <laughs> Maggie. Maggie cleaned my house every time she came over. It was cleaner than when we left. It was amazing. Now, well, see, the thing is now she'll not only be the best babysitter, but she will get you in line, right? Because she'll come in and make All you All right, Gordon, like 10 push-ups now. All right. Well, here we go. Okay, in the food pantry today. Yeah. The guys thought they would challenge her to a push-up contest. <laughs> she she tell me she won. She won. Oh, yes. what yeah. dummies. I, I would have yeah. never challenged her to that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you saying that at the at the, the the preparatory school that she dominated all the other guys there, too? She did, yes. And that's the guys going on the academy. Uh -huh. You no. don't mess with it. You no. don't. No. 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 That's no. awesome. So, uh, all right. So, I, I kind of have jokingly, like, said this to you in the office, I think, once, like, a long time ago. 
But on a serious note, because uh, Gomer's a little bit ahead of me in the parenthood game, I'm kind of at the beginning. We've got our uh, our oldest is uh, turning five next week. Um, how does one... One such as oneself. <laughs> yes. How does one uh, raise four children to be an Aggie grad, a, a U.S. Air Force uh, Academy appointment, an incredible singer, and a pole vaulter extraordinaire? How does one accomplish all that? And what I love is that your kids have such a strong understanding of their faith. And that's so important. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, I was kind of, my heart was a little bit broken today. You know, my, my five-year-old, I shared this with some of y'all earlier, is that uh, this morning he was talking to my mom in, in Tennessee and she was talking about how today's the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. And she was kind of showing him this picture of Our Lady of Fatima through the phone. And he looked at her and he said, oh, nanny, uh, I don't go to church anymore. And that like, you know, we watched the live stream at home, but that ripped my heart out. Like I was like, OK, he's putting a mask on. He's going to mass this weekend. Like that's happening. And uh, and so I think that's going to be a real challenge for parents as things get back to whatever the new normal is, is. How do you maintain the faith and, and ingrain it in your children in this time of pandemic? And, and you guys have done such a great job before the pandemic with your kids. I'm just curious what your advice as someone who's in charge of children's faith formation for a parish, what would you say to all those families? Which, by the way, the col- coloring uh, pages and the, the videos weekly have been very helpful. So thank you for that. That's fantastic. And I'm going to give a lot of that credit to Jennifer Rush. She yeah. helped me put that together every week. She's our nursery coordinator. But um, I... All I can say is you have to put faith first. And my husband and I have always, you know, he's a pilot by trade. So that means he travels for a living. Right. And there were there were Sundays when I had to take all four kids myself to mass with my hair on fire, trying to get in the van, get in the van. You know, all, we've all been there, did that. But you have to do that for yourself as a parent. And your kids have to see that because if I didn't go to mass, I would not have the graces I needed to be a good mom, to be a good wife, to be a friend to people. I needed that every week. And so you have to put your faith first and you have to allow your kids to explore that and to talk about it. And it's not always easy. You know, yeah. it's not easy to do that. But putting putting your faith first and then putting your faith in action. What can you do? Not everybody can solve the world's problems. Not everybody's going to go to the Air Force Academy or not everybody's going to go to a and those are, those are the gifts and the graces that God gave to my children to, to, to do those paths. So we've encouraged them to do that. But I've always said, what can you do to make a difference to somebody else? Because God did not put us on this earth to be the most beautiful, to be the smartest, to be the richest. God put us on this earth to take others with us to heaven. Right. That's the only reason. And if you accomplish that through being a strong person and having other people do push-ups with you, and, you know, Maggie's strong in many, many ways in her faith yeah. and in everything else. Yeah. But if you do that through the gifts God gave you, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I think that's awesome. You know, one of the big deals with trying to navigate parenting and your faith in this time is that you don't have the one thing that kind of I've always relied on implicitly, which is community, Yeah. right? My friends are, you know, we go to church, we see each other, we sit with each other, we talk to each other. Um, You know, my kids run up to other kids that they saw in, you know, VBS the previous summer and, you know, like all these different things that just reinforce and reinforce and reinforce and that's all gone. And, you know, we're, we're the only Catholics on the street. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when our kids start talking now, my kids are kind of nerds about a lot of that stuff. So uh, my next door neighbor's like, you are so smart because they were talking about what Easter is. And someone's like, that's when the Your Easter Bunny leaves you eggs. And he's like, yeah. that's when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then she started speaking in tongues. It was beautiful. But uh, <laughs> the uh, but the, it's so hard navigating this stuff right now. Like, it's just this weirdo right now time period that yeah like me and my wife like we homeschool right we homeschool you would think and i've had so many people say that's like oh it must be easy for you you guys homeschool and i say well okay we have a much better on-ramp but it ain't easy because you never notice until it's gone the trip that uh, our friend angie would bring over her kids in the morning and have a cup of coffee with my wife or the times that you just need a break and so you throw the kids in the van and go to the grocery store or you take them to Chick-fil-A and let them run around for an hour. And then all that is gone. The 20 micro breaks that my wife would get during the day, you know, especially at the beginning where we weren't even 
going out other than like getting some sun. We weren't going outside. We weren't, I wasn't letting them talk to the neighbor kids. Now I don't care. Now I'm like, just go lick everything. I don't care anymore. <laughs> My brain has broken in half. <laughs> but wear your mask. And they're um, literally bouncing off the walls. Yes. Like no, literally, Thomas is bouncing, bouncing off. Bouncing off the walls. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. We're, now we're just scoring them. Yeah, oh, impressive. that was a nine out of ten. Well done. <laughs> so yeah. uh, my, my theme was... Please, no emergency room visits. Oh, yes. my gosh. Yeah. No emergency room visits. I, I know That's so the only many, thing. Yeah, so we are not parents. doing it. Yeah. Well, my kids decided to pick up the old rollerblading habit. And I'm like, you can do roller skates. It had to be roller blades. It had to be the inline thing that right. you have to develop <laughs> a whole new set of muscle memory just to figure out yep. how to stand. Yep. Uh -huh. And so, but they all, all of them, my four-year-old, my six-year-old, uh, my eight and nine-year-old taught themselves how to roller blade. My four-year-old taught himself how to ride a, a, a big boy bicycle. So I drove him to Walmart. Thank God I went when I did. 90% of the boys' bikes were, so, or sure. little kid bikes were gone. I went back um, last week uh, to buy some delicious steak. Don't ever do that at Walmart. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went back 100% of their bikes in store, gone. Yeah. There was one of those tricycles where the parent steers from behind. Yeah. Other than that, all yep. gone. Which, hey, mind. you know, some of that's good. No, a lot of that's so, good. Yeah, a lot Absolutely. of that's good. So, all right. So, Christine, we've talked about what you've done in pandemic and hurricane. We all know what you do at the church with faith formation. We've and referenced prep. danger zone. We've, we've talked about <laughs> we talked about your your husband. We've talked about your four kids. What does Christine Marlowe do to take care of Christine Marlowe? Because I think that one, we just celebrated Mother's Day, which happy Mother's Day a few days late um, for yeah. that. Uh, my my family was amazing. They yeah. treated me like a queen. Good. What, did, what good. did you do? What did they do? What did, did they do? Well, I can tell you one thing. Lizzie, you better bake some of those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had homemade cards from all of them with nice. the most beautiful letters. If you want to make mom melt, yeah. write a letter about all the things you love about your mom. Awesome. Yeah, Aww, I had them from that everybody. Is great. That's yeah, good. That was so, one of the best things I've gotten. My kids just drew pictures of cats. <laughs> if that's what they think <laughs> about her. I well, my so. my kids brought their mom breakfast in bed and then proceeded to get in bed and eat the breakfast off of her plate. So <laughs> we're still at that stage, but, but even, out, the giving but tree. even, even outside of, uh, even outside of mother's day, like how does Christine Marlowe with all that you've got? Cause you're also working on a master's degree in pastoral studies, mm -hmm. uh, at university of St. Thomas. What, what do you do to take care of yourself on a spiritual level, but also just like what, like what is your hobby? Like where, where do you get filled and refed and recharged? Um, well, I can't reiterate enough. My family supports everything I do. My husband, I'll say, honey, I know I got, I'm going to be gone again. I'm, he goes, don't worry. We are going to be fine. You need to do that to make our family better, whatever it is. So he, I, I'm going to give a lot of props to my husband and my kids who know that um, ever since they were little, and I had that one of those moments where you feel like you're in an outer body experience because yeah. you're about to explode yeah. and the kids are part of it. Yeah. Okay. So Almost I would, the whole of it. Yeah. Yes. And I've usually never had one of those. Okay. <laughs> so when they were young and my husband would be traveling, I would say to him, mom is taking a time out. I'm going in my room. I don't want you to knock. I don't want to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything because I need a time out. Yeah. And they knew that they needed to back off. <laughs> and I'd go in my room. I'd have my little meltdown, blah, you know, and think about what I needed to think about and I always pray to Mary because I would say I need to be more like you. So I would always pray to Mary. And while I was having my own little personal meltdown, they were like, okay, let's clean up. Let's, <laughs> let's make some dinner. Joey, you be quiet. You watch TV, you know, whatever it was. Very strategic. And well I done. would come out and my kids knew that I just needed that help. So, but, so clear communication. Definitely. <laughs> uh, and I've learned that before exploding, I would try to communicate. I'm about at my level. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mom's about there. It is there. 11 I mean, o'clock on the nuclear countdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would try to communicate that. So they knew I was ticking up. Yeah. But um, my, my thing that I do is I run. I like to run. So I get up really early in the morning. I have some great running buddies and I go get the stress out that way. Now, are you chit-chatting with them? Or are you listening to music or no, death I'm metal or my podcast? I'm chit-chatting. Yeah. I, I not can, my podcast. <laughs> I cannot. And, and by the way, if you're hearing some background noise in this uh, podcast, it's because we're actually recording at Deacon Baldy's off 1488. 
which is our favorite uh, satellite church, satellite campus, satellite campus. But also sometimes that comes with some uh, revving of the engines. You know who you are, Magnolia residents. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I don't even know where I was going. I was going somewhere with that. Uh, somewhere so beautiful clear, with running. Yeah, running. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So <laughs> I cannot talk to other people when I'm running because then I would not be able to breathe. I would just pass out because there'd yeah. be no oxygen getting to my brain. But I do enjoy a small run every once in a while. But you're, you, you do marathons. Marathons have, and half marathons? Yes. What, was still, long distance, what was the most yeah. recent one that you did? The, um, did I do the Woodlands half? I didn't do the Woodlands half. I did the Houston half this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Which is in January. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, was, it was a lot of fun. I did that too. Uh, I've been told that I run like a Clydesdale, so I have avoided <laughs> the marathons. <laughs> you should have a wagon full of beer hooked up to you, son. You run I like think a it's Clydesdale. Just, I don't mean to, but like the size of my feet, if they're just so flat and mm -hmm. wide that it's just, it's like, <laughs> da -doom, da -doom, da -doom. Mm -hmm. but yeah, if I like to, I like to get up early and run. It's, it's like therapy. You mm -hmm. can talk. Yeah. They're great. You know, it's. Believe it or not, for those of you who are runners, you know what I'm saying. Running's relaxing. Yeah. Once once you can get through all the breathing, it, and a lot of stuff, exercise. It's yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's 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 kind of an oxymoron, but it is. And I like to um, get up and have my prayer time before everybody else in the house gets up because they don't get up that early. Do you when, pray when before school. the run? Um, no, after because I run really early. Okay. Yeah. How early do you get up? Like four thirty. Depending on the runtime, 4.30, yeah. 4.45, or 5, depending. That, I've, so I never thought that that would be my thing, but that has become my thing in the past few years, especially now having young kids, is I like to go get up at 4.30, go to the gym at 5 or 6, and then when I get home, they're, you know, starting to stir. and can. Mm -hmm. I'm, but I'm already, like, ready to go and make their breakfast and do all that. Um, I'm just going to gripe. I'm going to get a little political here for a second. I think of all the things that has frustrated me the most about like the shutdown and the reopening in Texas is that the gyms are one of the last things to reopen. Yeah. And I, tough. and I understand like the flinging of putrid sweat. Yeah. Well, but here, <laughs> but here's the thing. Anyone. Oh yeah. That's, okay. So I get it. Like oh, I get so it. If you're like, CrossFit, like uh, well, no, I mean, here's the thing though. A lot of these gyms, it's easier to social distance in a gym than it is. Yeah. In H -E -B. Yeah. And I just think that, the, the Sorry, those are your drumsticks. <laughs> I like, just think ah. that if there's anything we could be doing to help people with their mental health, it's right. exercise. And yeah. some people yep. 100%. do, like Christine can get out and run every morning. I'm not really that way. I need the group setting, even if I'm socially distant. Anyways, Governor Abbott, that's my one complaint with you. Well, let me yeah. just give the pro tip, okay, to both of y'all, since I guess you're not wise on it. Yeah. But every morning, I wake up really early at 745. And I do 45 minutes of jazzercise. Mm, that's an image. And then I finish. Uh huh. And Can then I'm already late for work. I would say I would. So I, I, I would ask you, I would ask you what you wear during <laughs> jazzercise, but I I need to guard my Starts heart. Starts with well, the uni. You, ends with the tard. But I will ah. say, if you, especially during the height of the quarantine, when yeah. we were allowed to get out to exercise, yeah. Yeah. if you were out on the trails or on the pass in the woodlands at about four or five o'clock, yeah. yes, which amazing, it's great because now. You're channeling, you know, those people maybe would never have time for a walk because they're at work. They're yeah. tra they're fighting the downtown traffic right. or, you know, doing stuff with the kids, have to go to baseball, have to go to wherever. And so that that was a really nice thing to see that oh, you're yeah. having to, like, pass on the trail. But I've you know, seen you a lot on your side. But all of Walmart's mm -hmm. uh, I, I live right near a Walmart. That's why I keep referencing Walmart for the record. Uh -huh. uh, all of Walmart's weights, all of their you know physical exercise equipment, except for like. A yoga ball are all sold out. Yeah, it's and hard been to sold find out right from now. Mm -hmm. you know pretty early on. I bought a exercise bike because I didn't know if we were going to be allowed out of our house. I'm like stationary bike in the house. <laughs> yeah. Kids broke it probably day week three, but uh, we fixed it. We got it going. So me and my wife uh, rocking the exercise bike. That's good. Those are yeah. tough. Those are tough. I uh, I, I have not so gotten it yet, but. I was very close about a month ago to convincing my wife to letting me buy a row machine. I love, <laughs> I love a, a row machine. Like that is one of my favorite things to do in the gym. Really? Yeah. That's actually like when I started actually taking my health seriously, I went to a gym. And when you went to Curves and you had your lifetime <laughs> yeah, membership at the Curves. Anyways, but it was rowing actually that got me back into exercising. I don't know what it, about it. It was, it was kind of like probably how you feel about running, mm -hmm. but on a rower, you don't row like a Clydesdale. I mean, I do, but... It's just easier on the knees for when you're six five. So they <laughs> <laughs> row like a Clydesdale. <laughs> That's it right there. Uh, so, anyways, 
that's uh that's very spiritual. I, I didn't do it because they're like eight or nine hundred dollars yeah. for brand new like the concept two ones yeah that's the one Ooh. i want mm-hmm. anyone's got one out there and you want to donate it to this guy i will yeah. take it off your hands the gyms but will I mean, reopen. Like, things things will reopen. They will. rhythmic and repetitious mm-hmm. you get into a groove yeah you know and that's a beautiful thing and you gotta burn the thing that i didn't realize for so long is cortisol you know the stress hormone and adrenaline right? They make you crazy. Even when you're not drinking tons of caffeine and going nuts, like you can, the stress levels will trigger this whole release in your body that if you, you have to find a way to burn it off. Right. And if, if you're like hanging on by a thread, mm-hmm. resistance training, you know, long distance running Get or outside, sprinting, just you just gotta outside. do it. Even walking, yeah. whatever Even you walking. can do. Walking, walking, that's one of my favorite things. If I'm not running, I'm walking the dog. Well, and there's, there's, <laughs> there's a spiritual side to that too, right? Yep. That's why, that is literally the idea behind pilgrimages. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Camino in Spain is all about going on a, a walk, going yeah. on a journey and yes. having that time for yeah. prayer is, is just, it's, it's, a, it's there. When I walk, it's beautiful meditation time. Yeah. 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 My favorite place to walk is, uh, and I try to do two miles every day is in front of the church, the wooded path. And so I used to walk around the, the perimeter of the church and I pray the rosary, but I realized like, of course I did this at 11 before the heat is, you know, but, um, in the shade of that, you know, right along Bay branch, it's shaded. It's all my, like I could, I feel differently mm-hmm. come even in the middle of it. Like, not like I'm burning calories and all this stuff. There's a peace. Yeah. yeah. There's a total. And I pray the rosary when I do it. And it's just, it's just awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the, that's the, the blessing of where we live. There's lots of trails. There's lots of yeah. paths. If you so. work in the woodlands, you might live in Conroe. That's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't live guy. in the woodlands. <laughs> but I, that was actually one of the reasons we chose the neighborhood. My neighborhood clear cut, yeah. not a tree as but far the, as you can see. Actually, that was one of the reasons we chose <laughs> the neighborhood we did in Conroe. Jay gets it. He lives two doors or two streets over. Yeah. My wife was adamant that we had to be in a neighborhood with sidewalks and man how prophetic that was uh, yeah. a few years ago because we've actually met and seen a lot of our neighbors that we didn't know yeah, yeah. through this I whole bet. process at a distance so all right we've talked a lot about exercise we talked about motherhood we talked about a lot of things but i think that we need to have a quick theological talk about today's feast day and gomer this is headed towards you uh, and maybe uh, maybe you christine too i don't uh, know how much you know about this topic but i think we need to talk about our lady of fatima because okay. today is the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Okay. May is the month of Mary. Another reason why we decided we should start out with a mom on the new, uh, the new and improved. She's so the She's, She's so, so Mary. Um, but <laughs> what, you know, kind of give us a little bit of the history of Our Lady of Fatima and why this is such an important feast day in the life of the church. Yeah. So Fatima was an apparition site that took place in Fatima, Portugal. Um, in, right before World War One, and there were a whole bunch of prophecies and different things that were kind of concerned about it uh, with the, the visionary children, and Mary appeared to these children. Interesting historical note, Fatima is the name of the, I believe, the fourth wife of the prophet Muhammad. Yeah, it's a Muslim and A lot name. of people don't know that, yeah. that, um, you know, when the, the Muslim conquest was undergoing, um, when they, they came all the way as far... Uh, into Europe as Poland and Vienna, and then all the way up through Spain and North Africa into Spain, and they were all over Portugal. And so Fatima is the name of a Muslim, of uh, one of Muhammad's wives, and, it, and, and it's still a common uh, female name oh, in yeah. Muslim countries. Yeah, you'll find it. You'll find it in a lot of uh, prominent female like politicians and stuff. They'll have right. that name. And um, so the idea of the of the thing there were there were three secrets about Fatima. The third, the revelation, the third secret, very impactful and there's a lot of controversy around it but the reality is whenever you have a valid apparition where mary appears or jesus appears or whatever um the church regards that as what we call private revelation right so you and i don't have to have a devotion to our lady of fatima any private revelation is always secondary to public revelation right which which is sacred scripture and tradition so when you have people that have devotions to these private revelations. That's all it can be is a devotion. And the cool thing is when the church takes those devotions and there's so much edification and holiness surrounding it that the church brings it into her liturgical calendar, right? So you have that with Our Lady of Fatima that we celebrate. 
Um, you have that with the Divine Mercy on Divine Mercy Sunday, a week after Easter. But most apparitions don't have their own, like, Marian feast days and things attached. So Fatima is, Fatima, Lords, um, and uh, uh, I'm sure there are others that I'm forgetting. I mean, I, I've Guadalupe. Been, yeah, Guadalupe. Oh, of course, Guadalupe. How could I forget that? <laughs> um, uh, Knock, Ireland. But Knock, Our Lady of Knock is not a big feast day here in America. But there's a lot of these beautiful sites. We regard them as prophecy. So you have to respect them if they're approved by the church. And the church rigorously investigates them. Right. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it has been since 1918, uh, I believe, a very significant um, moment in the life of the church. And one of the big comments was Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, and you have the rise of communism that dominated the 20th century, totalitarian regimes. You know, arguably World War I basically was a giant pause between one and two. They're almost the same war. And so you have a lot of these things that were that the emphasis was always on prayer and repentance. Right. And growing in what we would call a Marian spirituality. And what, one of the things you were saying earlier that I thought was so great, tying it back to motherhood and parenthood and stuff, is I tell this to people all the time. There are a lot of smart people burning in hell for all eternity. <laughs> right. There are a lot of smart people in heaven. Right. There is only one category of person that exists in heaven that does not exist in hell. Holy. And that's holy people. Yeah. And sometimes I think we forget that in our emphasis on education and all this stuff. And, and we both love education and we want to educate people. There's, it's not like it's anti-education, but formation means I'm forming you to be a type of person. I'm not just looking for a type of intellectual outcomes. I'm not looking for the memorization of facts. I want you to be informed by this knowledge. And so, which is why even Catholic education is such an important thing to the church, right? Yeah. Like, and, yeah. and some places it's better than others. I think they do a great job in our parish uh, school at trying to put that emphasis on the holiness because yeah. that's the difference maker. Why else would someone send their kid to a Catholic school in the woodlands? There has to be a linchpin, and that linchpin uniforms. Is, no, it's definitely holiness. Okay. So. Kudos, kudos to the school. Yeah, and so when you were talking earlier about, like, bringing people to heaven, like, that's the point, right? I, we're dominated by people who just want to show how impressive they are and how awesome they are. But how, how much you can serve is the measure that our Lord gave us. You know, the, the only person on the face of the earth who had the right to our worship was Jesus. And what did he say? The Son of Man came to serve, not to be served, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And that's what y'all are doing in the food pantry day in and day out. How many families do we serve on average? Like 180, 160, 200? Uh, it over oscillates 400 all over. A week. 400 a week. 400 a week. That's your neighbors. Yeah. Our neighbors that are that are coming through here. So that's awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we've talked a lot. We I have wanna, talked a lot. We I, do need to wrap it up. I want to Jay thank, is saying we need to wrap it up. I want to thank Christine Marlowe. Uh, so brave oh. coming on this goofy we show. We literally stopped you at the coffee bar and you said yes, just like Mary would have done. She said yeah. <laughs> she said, she said, fiat, fiat, thy I will be I didn't run fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm exhausted from my run this morning. I just can't get like, out of the building quick enough. Next time I see you at the coffee bar, I'm turning around. <laughs> But, uh, but seriously, thank you for being on today. And thank you yeah, for all. Thank you. It's that, my pleasure. Thank you for all that you do for the parish, uh, for the children of the parish, as well as the families mm -hmm. in need and teaming up with Franklin out there. Yeah. Uh, you are just a great asset and your family has been a gift to our parish. So thank Such you guys. Such a gift. Thank you. Awesome. Well, the parish has been a gift to us too. Awesome. For sure. All right. Well, mm -hmm. Our Lady of Fatima, St. Anthony of Padua. Pray, pray for, for us. us. God bless you all. See you next week. Do, 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 do. If, ish. If we're ever consistent. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>